Hey guys, Matt here with another episode of Nuance. Twitter is just garbage. Twitter is garbage. It, it forces you into small uh, phrases that are instantly turned back upon you by people with uh, bad intentions. <laughs> and recently I was embroiled in, in a conversation with a couple of people on Twitter. They were trying to say China and Chinese people are inherently racist and they proposed the example of that by saying, well, you go around China and you'll have people that will refer to you in public, just out of the blue, they'll point at, point at you because you're a foreigner and they'll say, why Warren? And in doing so, they're othering you and the insinuation is they're a, a form of racist. And the example they gave is what if you walked around and you were in America and you said, look at that black person. Well, first of all, by giving that specific example, you don't understand what Waiguaran means. First of all, your uh, intent is to label it as a color issue or a racism issue. Secondly, and um, it's just disingenuous <laughs> because first of all, uh, typically in America, people don't just say black people. Typically, they use some sort of a racial slur. Then it was turned upon me, because I kind of called that out, and they said, well, what if somebody walked up to your wife and said, look at that foreigner, screamed, they actually said screamed, and then screamed at your wife and said, look at that foreigner. Well, first of all, I have lived in China for uh, 10 to 15 years, you know, full time, like 12 years, and then off and on. 15 years. In that time, I have been referred to as a white Warren many times. Probably thousands and thousands of times. I've even been referred to as a Lawai. <laughs> and Lawai is probably a little bit more slang than uh, white Warren. But Wai is outside. Guo is country. Ren is person. So white Warren means outside of this country's person. And uh, Laowai has a similar connotation, but it's a, a little bit slang. Laowai instead of Wai Guaran. And so I've been referred to that many times. And maybe on a couple of occasions, it has been weaponized in a negative way. Where somebody said, Wai Guaran, like at a bar, the guy's drunk. He uses that term in a derogatory way. And when that happens, yes, that is racism. You know, and let me preface this. China is not devoid of racism. China has a lot of racism, as a matter of fact. Uh, they, they often are prejudiced and judgmental of black people. The uh, Hei is uh, black, so they'll say Hei Ren, which means black person. And oftentimes they'll say it in a derogatory way. And I've heard it in conversation and I don't like it. It's gross. Um, I grew up outside, outside of downtown Detroit. Um, and there is a, uh, there has been a very stark racial divide in Detroit between uh, people of color and, uh, and and other people. And there has been, I have witnessed it. I've been in places where true judgmental racism has emerged, especially against people of color. And it's it's dis disarming. It's unnerving. It's gross. It's disgusting. Whether it happens in America. Or whether it happens in China, or whether it happens in Japan. As a matter of fact, there is a racism issue with Chinese against Japanese. They can't seem to let go of the atrocities that Japan committed in, in the Chinese mainland. It is, it is understandable in some ways. Uh, their claim is that uh, Japan has never apologized for what had happened there. I would argue that, that time is supposed to heal wounds. And you could go to Japan today and you could hug a, a, a fellow human being for who they are today and not the atrocities that were committed um, in the past. Now that's a big conversation. That's a conversation in America with regards to people of color and their enslavement in the past. And there is a history of, of brutal racism in America, which also needs to become a factor when you refer to walking down the street and 
calling somebody out and saying, screaming, that's a black person. Well, in America, that sort of uh, moment carries a little bit more weight, but not much more. That, that's, that's a bad thing anywhere if it's, if it's designed or said in a manner that is attacking, right? Um, but the argument was back and forth and back and forth, and my friend Winston came in, and he says, no, Matt, you know, you're talking about othering. Othering, and that's, that's you know, the Chinese cup of tea is othering, you know? And I'll tell you what, Winston, I'll give it to you. If you refer to somebody as a foreigner outright, you are basically referring to them as something other than what the majority of China is populated with. So, I'll actually agree with you on that. But you have to understand context. You have to understand that I have been called Waiguaran, Laowai, these sorts of things many times. Well, why does it not bother me? Why should it not bother you? Well, China is populated and has been populated with the majority of the similar looking people, Asians. Their hair color is very similar, their stature is very similar, obviously there's variations. But when Westerners come to China, they are different. And so if you see somebody different, you'll say, oh, that's a foreigner. They know it right away. They know I am a foreigner. I'm not from China. It's actually very difficult for a foreigner to get residency in China. And that's another issue. You can talk about that. Is there a, is there a reason that, that China does not allow foreigners to get residency permits very easy as opposed to other countries? That's an issue we can talk about. But I would always push back on the fact that, and, and I even push back on Winston, because you have to understand the intention of what a person's trying to get at when they bring up this specific topic. When they say, in China, they'll call you a foreigner. Just like saying, hey, look, a black person. And that is completely not true. Okay, let me give you an example. And I won't even use the black person thing, because the black person thing is, that's about as a black and white literally an issue as you could possibly get because when somebody uh, says look at that black person they're attacking the person's actual skin color and that happens in china it happens in china i've heard it before but we're not talking about that we're talking about the term waiguaran when you go and walk on the street of china and somebody looks at you and they say ah, waiguaran waiguaran they're saying that's a foreigner and most of the time, 99.9% .9 of my time in China, maybe even more than that, they have said that in a way that is like, wow, he's a, he's a foreigner, that's cool. It's like seeing a dragon in America because America is a melting pot. It's very hard for you to empathize with the act of being called a foreigner in America because all of us are a melting pot of different people. And so that's my point is that if you were in America and somebody othered you by calling you a foreigner, well, first of all, if they screamed at you and said, look at that fucking foreigner. We have a lot of examples of that in America these days. We have a lot of examples of that in the West. People on buses, people on, you know, uh, train cars, people on the street, violence against Asian Americans. Th that's true racism. That's true othering. And to think that that isn't a problem in America as opposed to China, or that it's a lesser problem in America because it's bred into the culture in China. Well, that's very disingenuous. I have family in China. I speak to a lot of people there. I do not see the anti-foreigner violence that I see against Asians in America. There's not, 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 not a few days go by that there's not uh, a, f a real physical violent attack on somebody who is Asian in, in America. And it's done for this specific reason that that person is Asian. And it's done for that specific reason that that person doing the attack hates Asians. Go back to your country. You know, there's, there's a million ways you can, you can deride a Asian person. <laughs> Hell, they do it to Koreans when they want to do it to Chinese. 
They do it to, 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 to Thai people when they want to do it to Chinese. They don't even know how to direct the anger. But in China, it's a, hi, oh, wow. That's, that's somebody that I don't see a lot of in this country. Most of the time. And so I push back against a lot of that. And maybe I'm not being as honest as I should be. Because almost I push against it harder than I should. And it's because the audience that these guys are playing into, the audience outside of China, they're like a primed pump. They're a primed pump that only know the circle that they live in. And that circle is virulently anti-China. They're, they're, they're waiting for a reason to hate. They, they will latch on to a comment like, yeah, people in China, they refer to foreigners as Waigoran. You'll never go a few days without somebody looking at you and scr screaming foreigner. Now, if you've never been to China, if you don't never set foot on that land, if you've never been to Asia, you might look at that and hear that and say, those people are bad because I know what that means in America or I know what that means in the UK or I know what that means in, in a country in the West or outside of China. And it certainly isn't a pleasant thing to say to somebody. But in China, it's different. And that's why this, that's why nuance is so important because you got to understand the context of these things. So I would like to apologize to Winston, I guess, because he is right. In China, many people will refer to you as a foreigner. They'll say, hey, look at that outside my country person, Huai Guaren. But why? And with what feeling behind it? Oh, that's not explained. That's never explained by these guys. They will go on and on and on and talk about all the things that are said and done in China that look bad on the surface without going a little bit deeper and understanding the, the, the true meaning of it. And understanding that being referred to as a foreigner in China, it's not designed in a form to hate. It's not meant to uh, antagonize or deride. It's just a title that they give to people that look a lot different than 99% of the people that they live around in China. Can it be weaponized? Of course. Is it weaponized? Most certainly. And when it is, it's racism. My friend in America, he's white. My friend in America, he's fucking white. My friend in America, he's black. That black guy. I mean, can't you understand the difference between those things? So yes, in China, you will be otherized all the time. And it's no big deal. Because all they're saying is that you look like a person that doesn't, you know, isn't the, the majority of the people in China. It's sort of a fact, guys. And when you explain it like this, I hope you realize that you're not being insulted. You're not being dealt uh, an act of racism or something that you need to get hot and bothered about or, or pissed off about. Because that's what everybody's trying to do these days. All they want to do is piss you off. That's it. it I'm, I'm stuck in this crazy loop of Twitter where I, I can't, st I, I used to be all travel and, and, and nothing but good, happy feelings. But then I voiced my opinion against crazy shit like this. And it's become a onslaught of half truths. You, you're called Waiguaran in China. Yes. That means that you're not Chinese. Yeah. But they won't finish it off. They won't finish it off. And so the average person will finish it off themselves and say, those bastards, they just think they're the best and everybody else is shit. <laughs> but if you finish it off and say, they're just, they're just referring to you as somebody they don't see very often, a type of, of person, a type of look that they don't see very often. 
And that's no big deal. It's no big deal. And so to even bring it up in the context of not giving it enough context, you let people who would ordinarily, like in the West, you will right away think that's othering. That's, that's othering in a negative way. That's othering in a way that is bigoted and racist and evil and something we need to fight against, damn it, because that's what the end, end result is, right? We want to get angry enough to where we start judging each other. We've got to get frustrated enough that we get violent. I don't want to go there. So I push back against it. And then the black people reference comes out. And then Winston comes in with this holier than thou. You know, China is the most, you know, othering country in the world, you know, bar none. Okay. But give it some context. I mean, I might even say that just because China is so monogamous, right? Magnanimous, not magnanimous. It's so, so it's, it's a, it's a culture built upon a majority of people that look very similar. So when a foreigner comes in, a Western foreigner particularly, people will look at that person and say, wow, look, that's a foreigner. That's it. That's all. People in America can't, can't understand that. People in, in some places can't realize that because they live amongst Asians and, and Africans and, and Europeans and, you know, South Americans and Latin people and, and all sorts of different people. But China is not like that. Maybe not yet. Maybe it's moving in that direction. It certainly won't move in that direction if everybody's so knotted up and got their panties in the much and quick to judge. That's kind of why I created this channel and why I really want to continue this channel, especially when I get my van finished and everything, because I just see that the road that we're going on built upon fomenting anger with false truths or slivers of truths that are bent in a shitty direction. I, I, I got into another Twitter feud with somebody who shared a video that was, that was I guess, trending on, on Weibo that was uh, men that dragged a woman out of a restaurant, Chinese guys, and beat this woman to a pulp and her friend. It was a gross video. These people beat a couple of innocent people. Maybe it was mob related. There is a, like, there is a mafia in China. There's an element of, of, of violent thugs in China. Contextually, it's not everybody. Contextually, I have never witnessed like more than a couple of like drunken stupor people fighting it out and saying, that's not cool guys. And that was disgusting what video I saw. And the person came to me and said, see this? I bet you won't talk about this. Talk about it in what light? Talk about it in what context? It's an evil act. Of course it's horrible. Violence against women, violence against anybody is horrible. People, they, they, they crave to hate. They crave it. And then, then, the, and then the, these same people will say, I'm not against Chinese people. I'm against the Chinese government. I'm not against Chinese people. I'm against the Chinese government. Here's a video of Chinese people, a, a three or four Chinese people beating up two Chinese women. I want you to make a video about how bad violence against women is in China by Chinese people upon other, to, to other Chinese people. But I'm not, I'm not angry with the Chinese government. I love Chinese people. I'm, in, in this case, I am a Chinese person. I am a Chinese person, but I want you to take this, uh, this one simple example, smear it across the entire culture of China, and label everybody in China violent. Without, without whataboutisms. Matt, don't be talking about mass killings or school shootings or, or beatings by other people or crazy people locked up in, in huge numbers in the American prison system or, 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 or works of war or, or overt attacks or, you know, bombings of innocent civilians or don't talk about any of that. No, no, no. We need to focus on the bubble, that one instance of China and make it all of China. And then I say, no, I'm not going to talk about that. Right. Because all you do is talk positive about China. No. <laughs> I 
I try to talk fairly about China, and that's what we're missing these days. It's the other thing. You never talk bad about China. China f fucked up the whole Shanghai thing. I, the, the COVID lockdown was disgusting. I think the lockdown should end. I think zero COVID had its place, and then that should end. I think that China has its very polluted places, but they're a lot less polluted than they were before. I think that they, 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 they t take resources from the ocean more than they should, but I think all countries do that. And China's a country of 1.4 billion people, four times the population of the United States. I think, I think Chinese people, <laughs> I don't know, what do you want me to say? Anyways, we're, we're off that main topic, which was calling people Waiguaran which just had me <laughs> scratching my head. And these people that are in this conversation with me feel in their, their heart that what they're doing is good and what they're doing is righteous. And, you know, it's what China needs. It's what's gonna save China. Making everybody feel that Chinese are, are the most othering community in the entire world without any context and saying that they'll call you foreigners, which I'll tell you what, when you hear that and you're in America, you're like, those guys, they hate me. So you know what? I'll hate them right back. They think I'm a foreigner. Well, I think they're garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you're doing. You're not providing context. So that's what they're gonna think. Is it their fault? They don't know China. It's your job as a lot of these YouTubers out there to let them know what China is like. Let them know what the people are like. Let them know what it means when somebody says, you're a Waiguaran. You sure Waiguaran? Just a Waiguaran. Little kids come up to me, Waiguaran, Waiguaran. And I look at them and I say, hi, I'm an American, Meiguaran. And they'll say, wow, that's great. And that kid will go home and say to his mom, I met a, I met an American today. He, the way she, the way he will say that is I met a Waiguaran today. I met a foreigner and you know what? He was nice and he smiled to me. But if, <laughs> if one of the people who are fed this, this hatred and this anger and all of these insinuations goes to China or sees a Chinese person on the road, they'll never go to China. You're basically telling people the worst, you know, interpretations of what's happening in the, 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 what they're going to be exposed to in China. You think they're going to go and see it for themselves to judge, to say maybe the world is, is a little bit more nuanced and maybe I shouldn't be angry at Chinese. No, no, no. They're going to go to the closest Chinese person that they see and say, these guys deep in their hearts, they only think of me as a rotten foreigner. So you know what? I'm going to bang them over the head with a bat because I don't like them either. I don't like those guys because they don't like me. That's fucked up, man. So yeah, in China, if you consider referred, being referred to as a, a Waiguaran othering, yes, you will be othered all the time. Is it a bad thing? No. In fact, in many cases, it's sort of a compliment. Wow, that is, I met a foreigner today. That's so cool. That's up to you as a person interacting with the Chinese culture. But if you begin with the idea that it's a bad thing, you'll never even get to that point. You'll never even try to, you know, extend an olive branch out to people like that. And that's gross. And that's what this channel's supposed to push against. And that's what we need more of understanding and, and not looking at issues from that perspective. And this video has gone quite long. And we're in the Czech Republic. Look at this place. This is beautiful. <laughs> this is gorgeous. We are just, this, this is a really, really beautiful country. We're actually out here building a trike for me to take around the world. And I, I want to travel around and talk to people and learn about the world, learn about different cultures and different interpretations of what, what life is like and, 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 and food is like and all of these things. And uh, I'm having a great time. Go to my main channel, Jayu Nation, and, and follow some of that because it's really, really cool. The videos coming out on my channel are very travel, travel-log-ish. 
<laughs> which is something that I've been sort of wanting to get back to and getting out in the world. I've been to Malaysia just recently and now I'm in the Czech Republic. I'll be here for a couple more weeks. We're going on some amazing adventures on these sorts of uh, trikes and stuff with, with the company that manufactures them. It's, it's a gr good time. And, uh, and I'm absorbing the world as I travel through. So don't be afraid of it. Don't prejudge it. Don't let other people uh, uh, make you feel like other cultures are judgmental towards you. You go out and you experience it. Realize for yourself these things. Don't listen just to me. Don't listen just to these knobheads. You know, you'll be better for it. Anyways, hey, why don't you like, hit that little bell. <laughs> hit the bell, just hit it. I wish the bell would ding. Of course, that would be annoying, but let's just hit the bell. And then, and then I'm gonna try and put some more of the content on here because I think we need it. We really need it. I won't be so long-winded though, but 30 minutes is good enough. Hell, half of these people out there will watch a three-hour Joe Rogan podcast. You can listen to 30 minutes of me. <laughs> oh, crazy world. Later, guys.